What is going on, guys and girls? I am Iodrew Man, and welcome to my Dark Souls walkthrough part 13. In this episode, we take down the Gaping Dragon in the beginning part of Blight Town. The Gaping Dragon isn't too challenging if you've beaten him before. All you really have to do to beat him is learn his moveset and just know when and when not to attack. Because overall, in my opinion, he's kind of easy, but I did kind of drag out this fight. Um, to make the fight last a lot shorter, uh, you can buy Gold Pine Resin from the sales guy who is outside of the hallway that leads to the Gaping Dragon. He sells some useful items, including some Gold Pine Resin, so just make sure to stock up on that, because that is a lot of damage to Dragon guys. Um, the lore behind the Gaping Dragon is that he... Uh, went mad with the desire of how much he ate, and so he ate a lot, and so uh, basically all of his um, innards and organs turned to teeth. So yeah, he likes eating, and I guess he wants to eat you. So make sure not to let him eat you, and kill him. Uh, you want to be careful of that move right there, where he swings his tail around. That can do a lot of damage to you if you're not careful, along with um, break your guard. So you really want to be careful about that. The, the Game of Dragon was being a real pain to me right now. You wait, what you want to do is wait for him to do that move where he slams on the ground. I typically get one hit on his hand and then run away because typically he goes charging forward. That's that's a common uh, a common combo of his. So just make sure when he does that to go for his tail. If you hit his tail uh, about where I'm hitting it now or farther back, then it'll actually break like that, and you'll get the Dragon King Great Axe, which is a really powerful axe, but you need a lot of strength to use it. So just to let y'all know that. Um, and again, if you notice, he hits the slam down again. He's going to charge forward now. The uh, charge forward move is pretty much a one-hit kill. You might not think so, but even if his foot, like, nicks you, it'll kill you in one hit. That's happened to me a few times before. First time I've had to fight him, so... Uh, if you notice, uh, I'm not doing too much damage to him, but this is a battle axe plus five, I believe. So, um, a weapon that's upgraded to plus ten is much better. You can upgrade it to plus ten by going to Andre when you have the large ember. Uh, I showed that one of my previous, previous episodes, and that was really close. Right there, you get the uh, warrior starting set. I got the warrior, uh, I mean the standard helm and the leather, hard leather armor. So that is the um, the warrior starting equipment. So uh, if you want to pick that up, and that's that's something you can do. That right there is his grabbing move. He will grab you and then drop you inside of his teeth and take out a lot of your health. So you want to be careful of that. Uh, yeah. So. Gaping Dragon really isn't too challenging once you've beaten him before. Um, his moveset's fairly simple. You just gotta be aware of some of his uh, harder moves to dodge, like the tail swing. But once you chop it off, he's really he's really no no pain at all. So I think this fight here is the third time in a row I've beaten him without getting hurt. And I wasn't even trying to, so it's 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 honestly not a hard boss. And right there the camera was really screwing with me, so don't let that happen. And when he just starts wiggling around like that, he is going to puke. When he does that, you want to run very, very far away. That that puke goes a very large distance, but the hitbox for it is not as big as it actually goes. But you still want to stay really far away from it. It's it doesn't do too much damage, but it can get annoying. Even if you, if you're up close to him and he does it, that that can that can uh, end in some very very poor poor things. So uh, yeah, when. Uh, also, on this boss, when you get him down to low life, do not just rush in for the final hit. I've had incidents where I got his life so low I couldn't see it. I rushed in to try to kill him and he killed me, so don't be greedy for hits. Never be greedy for hits, even if he only has one hit left till he dies. Just play smart the whole way through. Um, but again, he isn't a really challenging boss, he was just kind of being a pain. If he had, I was just waiting for him to do his charging move, but he was just kind of being... A troll, I guess. He just didn't want me to kill him. He was, yeah, just being a pain, just puking and stuff. So, if he does this, I believe he does a smash down move right here. Nope, no, he doesn't. Yes, he does. So, there he goes. He smashes down. If you hit his head, you actually can do more damage. But I prefer to hit his arm. But I was just waiting for him to do his charging attack, but he just wasn't doing it. So, yep. Uh, I really have nothing else to say other than use Gold Pine Resin wait for him to, to charge forward. He was really trolling me right here. He was really getting annoying. So, Gold Pine Resin, high powerful weapons, yeah. It was, this is so much longer than I needed to make the fight. So, you can just skip ahead, I guess, to 
when the when the fight ends. I'll probably I'll add a, an annotation to it, so an annotation to the video to skip to where I killed the gaping dragon. It was just so much, this fight just so much longer than it needed to be because he was really being just a pain, I guess. Uh, kill him, gave him dragon. There we go. So I finished him off right there. He gives you twenty thousand souls, I think. Now get a little celebration jig. Get the Blight Town key, which leads obviously down to Blight Town. So heading down to Blight Town. Blight Town sucks. If you want to get some stuff to avoid the Toxic Bloatart guys, I showed that one of my previous episodes. I'll, I'll point the Toxic Bloatart guys out when we get there, and I just got lost. I always get lost on my way out, out of here, but... I was considering using a Homeward Bone, and so I used it. I thought I thought I didn't use it, but I used it anyways, because I was going to use my souls that I got to level up and stuff, so... Because I do not think I've had a single playthrough where I've been through the entire Blight Town without dying. Because Blight Town sucks, so just letting y'all know that now foreshadow bad things happen in Blighttown because I didn't buy toxic stuff or toxic removal stuff so make sure to stock up on that the toxic blow dart guys do not respawn when you kill them so that's that's a nice little nice little thing and right here you can see me repairing my stuff it's always good to repair your stuff once you have a good bit of souls because you don't want your stuff to break in the middle of a battle with a boss or a mini boss or anything or right behind it right next to a bonfire that's that's really bad. So I just always try to keep my keep my stuff uh, uh, repaired and um, up to date. Uh, yeah, just playing stupid right here. So this is how you get down to Blight Town from the bonfire. If you've opened up the shortcut, you just come this way, go down the go down the stairs, and head towards the Blight Town ginormous door. Well, it's not super ginormous, but you know, it's bigger than the average door. So, uh, to get the gold pine resin, you can buy it from that guy on my right. I just passed him. He's just kind of sitting there. After you go through Blight Town, he will actually appear up at Firelink Shrine. So, he will sell the master key there for 5,000 souls. So, once you're done with Blight Town, and you're like, Oh, I wish I got the master key. Well, you can go buy the master key from him. But, by now, the, the majority of the master key uses are, are lessened. Because the biggest master key uses are for shortcuts um, to get... You can actually use a blight, the Blight Town key to skip the entire depths and pretty much the entire Blight Town, except for the Blight Town Swamp. Uh, you cannot skip the Blight Town Swamp because it leads to the one of the main bosses, but you can actually beat this game without beating the Gaping Dragon or killing the Capra Demon if you use the, the Master Key the correct way. Right here, if you stand right here, you can actually get that guy to fall off the edge, but for some reason he just kept roaring, so... If you stand right here, and he doesn't keep roaring, he will actually walk off the edge. So he, he roars like three times in a row. By now he's getting kind of pissed off, so... He's like, come on. So there you go. He just he just walks off the edge. So that's that's a way to get rid of them if you're having trouble with them. Um, what I do here, though, they, they drop 500 souls, so that's nice. So what you want to do is you want to run through here. Just I just I just gun it past these guys. You really got to get your roll times, roll times right. Uh, there is a... A, um, a toxic dart shooter to my right, right there, that way, I, I, I just point him out right there, um, what you can do is you can go kill him and he won't respawn, and yeah, so if you notice I just barely dodged a toxic dart right there, I just got the uh, E-Auto, this is my way down Blight Town by the way, it, it's the easiest way in my opinion, so if you're having trouble you can just go this way, and that jump I made has an odd, has a very oddly made box of landing. It has like an invisible wall, I think, somewhere, so you have to get your jump right to, to survive, so. Also, since the Toxic Dark Guy is a non-respawnable enemy, he will not be reset by the bonfire, so if you rest at the bonfire and then you get toxic, just kind of move on with the level a little bit, and then go back and hit the bonfire, and then uh, you should be okay. So there, right there, there's a guy in a pot. I, I don't know. I guess he likes pot, I guess. He likes pots. Pots. That's, that's what I meant, pots. So, you can leave him in there, you can kill him, I decided to leave him in there. It doesn't really do any difference. Um, yeah, there's these guys. These guys are interesting. They can do some odd, odd grabbing moves. Uh, right there. He jumps forward like that. If he grabs you, he will eat your face. So, you really don't want him to grab you right there. That, that can result in bad events. These are some fire dog thingies. They're really annoying. They're much, in my opinion, much more annoying than the, than the uh, dogs and the, the dogs earlier. 
Those are some annoying dogs, the, the fire ones. You just gotta be careful of them. Right here, you can see another toxic dart guy. You actually, I, I made the mistake of not, I was trying to get a backstab on this guy and avoid the toxic. But, um, what you want to do is when you fight this guy, you really want to fight him over where you saw him running. And right there, that guy got a toxic dart on me, so. Uh, I was getting kind of frustrated right here because I only bought one of the toxic, uh, the blooming purple moss clumps, which removes toxic. So, I came over here. You want to fight both these guys over here. The toxic guy cannot get you when you're fighting him right here. So, you just want to kill him over here. I hit it in it. I got an SS flask, and then I use my, my only blooming purple moss clump because I was stupid and didn't buy more. And if you go over here, apparently he can retoxic you. So don't I didn't know that. And that was that was my mistake. So you really want to be careful of that. Right here I was freaking out. I just I knew I was gonna die, so I just decided I was like, you know what, I'm gonna kill the, the toxic dark guys because he does not respawn and he's just really annoying. So right here I just kinda rush through uh, I climb up this ladder. This ladder leads to the toxic dark guy, and if you'll notice how fast my life is dropping. That's what Toxic does. Poison does about a lot less than that. Um, you, you can see it, how much Toxic does later. But there's the Toxic Dark guy right there. You kill him, he does not respawn. I drank an SS Flask because I was going to be dying. So if you, I kill him. If you kill him, you automatically get some Purple Moss. Sometimes you get Blooming Purple Moss, and that's what I was relying on to survive. But when I didn't get it, I knew I was going to die. So I just decided to try to kill these guys, but then I made the mistake of rolling off the edge, losing most of my life, and the Toxic ended it for me. So, uh, next episode we take out the entire Blight Town, so make sure to stay tuned, and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. See y'all next time.